cinema as gifted by Venus, astrologer Aditya Guruji. I had indicated in the earlier chapter that when malefic planets are in a state of retrogression in their own house, then they would effectively bestow their significations or functions. Similarly, when Saturn or Mars are retrograde in their own house and also devoid of Sabbath Hoover, beneficence, then they would destroy the implications of houses owned by them with their evil deeds, for example, Saturn's placement in his own seventh house is not a good proposition, this could be expected for ascendants of Cancer and Leo, during his Daza the malefic effects of a retrograde Saturn in his own seventh house would be much more in comparison to his occupation in the seventh house without retrogression, same is the case with Mars. A retrograde Mars without association with either Moon or Jupiter would be poised to give his negative significations with full vigor, as the planets in retrogression get the ability to function in contradiction to its natural self, benefic planets would not be able to give positive results, malefic planets would be poised to give more of their negative results, this defines the phenomenon of retrogression in own house in a nutshell. The functions or the significations of all the planets have to be assessed similarly, when a planet is in retrogression in a friendly house would give results as though being in an equal or inimical house, when a planet is in retrogression in a debilitated state, it has been indicated in our scriptures that this would result in cancellation of debilitation and the planet would attain the entirely contrasting status of exaltation. In this state of debilitated retrogression, the significations or the functions of the planet would be completely granted to the native, but, please make a note that the significations would be attributed at a later stage, after initially spoiling or diminishing his functionalities. There are subtle differences between a direct exaltation and attaining the state of exaltation in debilitation, similarly, there are differences between a debilitated planet associating with an exalted planet and thereby attaining exaltation through that planet. Direct exaltation gives the planet the ability to provide the maximum results through his significations and through the implications of houses without the need for any trigger. This happens transparently. This means that when Venus attains exaltation in Pisces without any deficiency, then his significations or functions like house, vehicle, women, lust, entertainment, luxury etc., would be bestowed strongly to the native through the implications of the house during his Daza and Bhakti, he would give long-lasting benefits, when he is in a weaker state of retrogression in exaltation in Pisces, he would first give all the positive attributes relating to house, vehicle wife etc., during his Daza and Bhakti, but would not allow the good results to last longer and gives troubles or hurdles, when Venus is in a completely debilitated state in Virgo, then his aforesaid significations, like house, vehicle, wife, women, lust etc., would be unavailable, marriage will not happen at appropriate ages, pleasure from women would not be available there would no possibility for owning a house, but at the same time if he attains retrogression in this debilitated state here, then there would be delays and hurdles in receiving these significations. Though in the beginning of the Dazu or Bhakti, these attributes would not be forthcoming, but the native would gain them after a struggle and would be able to have them till the end. A very important aspect here is that if there is a direct Nietzsche banger, then it would elevate the status to a level higher than exaltation. A debilitated Venus in Virgo, when placed in angular houses of Moon and along with exalted Mercury, though would give diminished results initially true to that of debilitation but subsequently grow in abundance so as to elevate the native. I have seen this configuration in the horoscopes of a few award-winning artists, particularly, it can be mentioned that such a configuration of Venus in a state of nullified debilitation exists in the horoscope of North Indian actor, Amitabh Bachchan, who was rejected initially by big medias like radio and later by cinema without being offered an opportunity but subsequently rose to become the superstar. 
A holistic explanation of the debility of a planet would be that it is a state wherein the planet is completely weakened or is devoid of providing favorable results with respect to its significations. It is the state in which a man is tempted by the significations of the planet, only to ultimately ruin himself, but, a complete Nietzsche Bango is an altogether contrary status. A planet in direct Nietzsche Banga would be in a status of bestowing all its significations. This is one of the subtle intricacies in astrology. A rich experience and exceptional knowledge in astrology is gifted by the Almighty is essential for one to distinguish between a simple and a complete Nietzsche Banga. Superficially, this arrangement is bound to confuse anyone. It is not a good proposition to have a benefic planet like Venus in debilitation in any horoscope. There are rare examples perhaps one in a craw, like Amitabhachan, to whom such a configuration has been beneficial and not to one and all with exalted Mercury is associated with a debilitated Venus. In such situations, if Venus also happens to be a benefic to the native, then he would be tempted to take up professions relating to cinema or television, without much success at the same time not allowing to quit, luring him to further indulging into the job resulting in sorrows and a trouble-torn life. A debilitated Venus would give a turbulent life, severe financial crisis, inability to dwell in a comfortable house or an own house, even if he owns one be unable to retain the same and would drive him towards disposing the property. A weak Venus would engage the native in professions relating to his significations like restaurants, textiles, items related to women, travel agencies involved in transporting people, white color etc., and during his dazu or bhakti he would incur huge losses. But when he is in a Sabbath Hoover, beneficial, powerful state, huge gains could be expected in all aspects as mentioned above, when in debilitation along with aspect or association with malefics, he would bring about changes in the character of the native, as Venus is an indicator of spouse, in some situations it would lead to worries and distress due to behavior of the spouse. The Dazu or Bhakti of a debilitated Venus in aspect or association with malefics like Mars, Saturn or Ou, would give rise to abnormal and diverse experiences, generally, in any horoscope, under no circumstances favors could be expected, with the weakening of a natural benefic planet like Venus. This configuration would lead to mental distress, Karukathavam, significations and adapathiyam, house implications. Astrology is full of intricacies and subtleties. It is hence very difficult to explain profound concepts lucidly. It has been brought to my notice that some of the concepts explained by me in the previous chapter have not been understood by a few. Though to the beginners in astrology, the difference between the concepts of Karukathavam, significations or functionalities, and adapathiyam, implications due to houses, are somewhat difficult to understand, repeatedly revising the tough portions in my articles would certainly enable better understanding, Karukathavam, signification, could be understood as functionality, whatever function or signification a planet has been destined to give to a human being is referred to as the Karukathavam or functionality or signification of the planet, for example, Jupiter is responsible for giving wealth and children, this is his signification or Karukathavam. Saturn bestows longevity, debts, disease and poverty, these are the significations or Karukathuvas of Saturn. Karaku or significator refers to the principal function or signification of the planet. It could be further elucidated based on examples like Jupiter being referred to as Puthra Karaka or the principal significator of children while Saturn is referred as a Yash Karaka or the principal significator of longevity. Adapathiyam refers to implications due to sequence of the house amongst the twelve signs of zodiac Aries to Pisces and the functionality of the said house. For example, the second house implies wealth spoken words, 
speech, family etc., of a human being. Sixth house implies attributes like his enemies, diseases and debt. The implications of functioning of the houses are indicated as adipathi yam, the combination of the signification of the planet and the implication of the house or zodiacal sign decide the future of a human being, this means, the events are the results of combinations of karakathuvas, significations, and adipathi, implications of the houses. Whether that event or result would occur at all and when it could be expected is decided by the Daza and Bhakti. Based on the strength of the planet and the house in which it is placed in, it could be decided whether good or bad effects could be expected for the native. Hence, the fundamental basis of astrology is Karakathavam, signification, and Adapathayam, implications of houses. The secret of accurate prediction lies in the ability to adjudge whether a planet or house is with suba, beneficial, strength or has attained papath huva, maleficence, and in clear understanding of the adipathia, implications, of the house and the favorable or unfavorable karakath huvas, significations, of the owner of the house.